All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to my Fallout 4 Mod Spotlight series, where today we are having a look at the Shield Integration Project mod, which is being made by user Ethnet. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a handful of lore friendly shields for you to use. And these things are pretty awesome, though can be awkward to, you know, see through, as you can tell by this one particular shield. And not only are these things a viable melee weapon for you to bash your enemies with, they are actual usable shields that will block some damage. More on how all that works in a little bit. But yeah, these things are pretty awesome. I mean, I never really thought of playing much with like a ballistic shield in this game, but it's it's pretty neat. So let's uh, jump on over here and have a look at what we do get with the various shields. I've only got a couple of them out because they are large and bulky and kind of hard to display. But uh, let's go through the eight different shields we currently have in in this mod, starting with the Barbed Raider Shield, which is a pretty fun one. Of course, it's one that's going to be found on Raiders, and the most important part of this particular shield is, of course, well, in any of the shields, this is a damage resistance threshold, this one being at 16. We then have the Brotherhood Ballistic Shield, which has a much higher damage threshold, which is going to be at 80. And then after that, we have the much less impressive Improvised Shield. Not a whole lot of protection here at only plus 13 for damage resistance threshold. But hey, a little bit of protection is better than nothing. We then have the Mire Lurk Shield, or Shell Shield, which has a bit more than the Improvised Shield at 25 damage resistance. And kind of looks neat with the like old school wooden shield on the uh, bottom part of it. Very cool. We then have the Prototype phase shield used by the Institute, and it is, oh boy, the most protective, but as you can tell by this image here, it doesn't cover a lot of your body, but it has a 100% damage reduction threshold on this thing. And then we have just a plain old normal raider shield with a plus 18 damage resistance threshold. Then we have the tactical shield, the one I'm currently holding on to, which is very, very protective at 100 damage resistance threshold, and is just pretty darn neat looking and finally we've got the vault shield which is I, I actually think the least protective of all of them at just plus 12 but is a pretty cool classic looking riot shield not too shabby there and as you can see on all of these shields their weights are pretty high the majority of them have a weight of eight whereas some of the smaller ones like the Mirelurk shell shield and the uh the vault shield here have half that at four now, of course, they are melee weapons, and they're all slow, except for, of course, the prototype phase shield, which is a bit quicker at medium, and each is actually going to do a different amount of damage for the actual melee component of this thing, with the barbed raider shield, I think, being my favorite, just because it has the 28 physical and 15 bleeding damage, uh, but overall, they're not going to be the most damaging thing ever, though you can see the prototype phase one is actually the highest of damage at 70, but all in all, they are still effective melee weapons, but most importantly are those damage thresholds that we get on these things, because that, that is how these things actually block, which again, I'll talk about that more in a minute, because we'll have to go into to a bit more detail in that, but as for the shields themselves, they are pretty freaking awesome, and how you'll get them is, well, pretty intuitive. Again, a lot of these have specific factions uh, on the names with Brotherhood, Raider, etc., and those aren't just fun names, those are who you're gonna find them on. So you're only gonna find the Brotherhood Ballistic Shield on Brotherhood of Steel members. The Raider Barb Shield, or the Old School Raider Shield, again, on Raiders with those two, and other various ones on other various enemies. Now, you will also find them in stores as well, so you'll find the occasional one in a vendor, and there are two that can be made at any chemistry station in the world. You just gotta go down to the shield category here, and you can make yourself an improvised shield or the Mirelurk shell shield or just a bit of material. So you can get those pretty darn early on, though of course they aren't the most protective things ever, but hey, they do the trick at least a bit. 
Now, I should also mention there is some requirements to get this thing to work. Mod-wise, you are going to need the shield framework, as well as the Fallout 4 script extender. And with those, you'll be able to play around with this mod and have all the shields you could ever want. Now, one sad thing is that none of these shields actually can be modified at a weapon workbench. I was hoping maybe we could up the damage on these things or add some weird wacky Fallout type-esque stuff, but sadly, that is a no. But on their own, they are still pretty fun shields that are very useful and block damage, which is sweet. So let's talk about how that does function. Now, when it comes to laser weaponry, these shields will block everything that at least hits the shield. That's going to be a key component here. If it doesn't hit the shield, it's not going to block it. So if an enemy does get behind you, or say they shoot at my feet that aren't covered by this particular shield, or, you know, worse so with like the prototype phase shield here. This thing does not cover a lot. It may protect the most, but it does not cover a lot. So yes, the blocking is only going to work for wherever the shield is covering. And lasers completely blocked. Melee attacks are finicky at the moment. There's some, uh, there's a known issue where they work perfectly fine for NPCs, but you, it doesn't always actually block a melee attack coming in. So that's a little bit wonky right now, but hopefully that does get fixed. Now, as for bullets, that's where the damage threshold in here comes into play, because it's only going to block up to the damage threshold. So if you do encounter an enemy in the field and they've got a really nice shield like the Brotherhood Ballistic Shield here, you're going to need a gun that has more than 80 damage. So <laughs> that could be problematic, especially if you are an automatic weapon user, as those do tend to be low per shot. So if that is the case, you're just gonna have to get around the enemy and shoot them behind the shield. But if you encounter them, pull out yourself that big 50 cow sniper rifle and take them down that way. And I, so I, I do really, really like that, that these damage thresholds are, or rather do matter for how it protects you. Which also means that some of these uh, earlier shields, like the Raider's shield at just 18 and the uh, Improvised shield at 13, yeah, those are going to be real easy to shoot through. You're not going to need a very powerful gun at all for that. In fact, this unmodified 10mm pistol is already more than enough to take down an Improvised shield here. But let's play around with them and uh, actually grab my favorite shield here is actually the tactical one. I really do like this one. And spawn ourselves a uh, Raider in here to show off that damage Shit. protection. Oh, he's behind me, and so, of course, he did damage. But now that he is in front of me there and trying to shoot, you can see he's hitting the shield, and it's making a ricochet sound, of course, unless he just hit me in the foot like he did there a moment ago. But yeah, so long as it hits the actual shield, we are perfectly protected. And then can run up to him and just smack him around, though, oh god, he's gonna kill me because I got shot in the feet earlier. Oh, good, good, good one on there for me there. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I should have used the stim pack before rushing in like an idiot. But yes, let's just try that again, though. <laughs> and go first person, load in another oh, bandit, and hopefully, yep, there we go. Turn around before he shot me in the back. And yeah, he is trying to shoot me center mass, so all of these shots are just, you know, ricocheting right off. Which is pretty great. Though I don't know if they're actually properly ricocheting. They're just being absorbed there. Ooh, he got me in the foot on that last one. But yeah, and then we just run up to him and whack him. There we go. And, oh, come on. Hit him. Beautiful. He is now dead. So yeah, that's the shield integration project mod. You got a lot of fun shields here that are going to provide you a lot of good protection so long as they shoot the shield itself. And it's going to be very interesting encountering these on enemies out in the world because it's going to have to change up your own fighting tactics. You're going to have to either have a bigger gun than them to blow through their shield or, of course, find your way behind them to shoot them you know, 
where they're not covered by said shield. It's all in all a pretty fun little mod that I think I very much will enjoy <laughs> messing around with in the game. And if you'd like to take a look at it for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you do, you can have a look at the link in the video as per usual. But that's going to be it for this one today. Hope you all have enjoyed and you do come back for the next one. But until that time, uh, thank you for watching. As always, we'll have a good one. <laughs>